LeBron James almost got a triple double before letting the bench play in the final six minutes of the game as the Lakers beat the conference leading Thunder 116 to 104, the team's 10th victory in 14 games. Now, the West play in standings are tight with only two and a half games separating the 10th place Lakers and the 6th place Suns. The Lakers' playoff chances are up to 60% for ESPN analytics. And a reminder that the sixth seed gets to avoid the play in completely. AD, how are you feeling about this postseason? We don't really care what, you know, CBN. Uh, we proven that last year. Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, I think this goes on to anyone. You know, you just try to get in and then, you know, play also the different animals. So, um, you know, we don't look at it as, you know, we want to, we'd rather have this matchup than this matchup. You know, for us, it's just about getting in and uh, tackling each opponent. And then, all right, Stephen, I'm going to start with you on this one. Do you think the Lakers are a legit threat in the West? No, not at this particular moment in time. And the reason why is because I was just in L.A. Saturday, uh, J.J., you saw me there. You know what I'm saying? You, you, were, you were there, you know, doing a great job calling the game. By the way, congratulations, you, Doris Burke, Mike Breen, all that other stuff. Killing you it. look so happy. You look so happy, J.J. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, Shay Shay, he was, he was there, I was there. And we saw the Lakers once again fall to the reigning defending NBA champion, Devin Nuggets. Can't beat them. Lost eight straight. How am I supposed to consider you a serious threat when the reigning defending NBA champions continuously abuses you at every turn? I understand that the Lakers could beat almost anybody else. I get that part. And I guess because of that, you can label them a, a contender per se, a legitimate threat in the West. I just don't feel that way. I'm not sold on them right now. And I could be wrong. I understand that. But I just don't feel like I'm too sold on them right now. Even though I look at them last night and you beat Shea Gilgis Alexander, who didn't have the greatest game, and the gold and the Oklahoma City Thunder, I'm looking at them. I know you what you've done against the Clippers this particular regular season, but I've seen the deficits that you've come back from. I'm, I just look at the Lakers and I find myself saying, J.J. and Shea, I'm like, yo, they, they can ball. I get it. They can't beat the Denver Nuggets. That's their kryptonite. And – to me, that's the measuring stick for me. I just look at them against Denver, and to lose eight straight to the Denver Nuggets is just bothersome for me. And if we're talking about a legitimate threat, well, the reigning defending NBA champions are in the West. You got to go through them, and you've shown no willingness or ability to beat them. That's where I'm at with it, guys. Oklahoma City had, had a tough game Sunday night in Phoenix. Then they turn around, and they've got to play the Lakers on a back-to-back. -back. They had the worst shooting first half of their entire season. Yep. They are a legit threat. I think Minnesota's a legit threat. I think the Clippers are a legit threat. But we can sort of stop the entire conversation when we talk about them winning the Western Conference, the Lakers winning the Western Conference because of what Stephen A. said. I do not think that was a, they but can, that beat, was, but that they can the beat the Denver Nuggets. But see, why do you? Why do people make all these concessions? Oh, it was a tough back to back. It was a this or that. I'm not. You making make concessions, concessions from I'm, every. I'm hold on, hold on, JJ, JJ, the JJ, loss I'll let you speak. I, I, yeah. I know you I'm always. You do a great job of contextualizing. But yeah. let me speak. The problem, the problem that I have with you and others is that you make concessions for every other team in the West, not name the Lakers. If the Lakers had lost on a back to back, you would have said they're old and tired. Well, let me ask you this. Who are Phoenix wing stoppers on the on the defensive end? We saw LeBron hunt Kawhi Leonard. We saw LeBron James do what he did. Who's going to guard LeBron James for the uh, Clippers? Who's going to guard LeBron James LeBron for Phoenix? James did, LeBron James didn't hunt Kawhi Leonard in that fourth quarter. Clippers switched more than any team. They put him in the pick and roll. They put, they Daniel, put him in the pick they and put roll. Daniel Tice on LeBron James in that fourth quarter. He hit two transition threes. Did, they messed up. On, they messed on. up the first three. They messed Kawhi up the switch on Horn's chest. They messed up the, th the switch on Horn's <laughs> dress. Then he hits two transition threes. Then he hits a three over Daniel Tice. Now, all of a sudden, they're forced to double. He, he was not hunting Kawhi Leonard. Shannon. Let me ask He's you a question. Hunting Kawhi if Kawhi Leonard. Leonard is what, hold on. If Kawhi Leonard is what you said, why didn't he fight harder over that pick? See, that's what the guy, that's what Kobe did. That's what Jordan did. That's what LeBron did when he was in his prime. He fought over picks. So answer that question, Mr. Contextualization. Shannon, you're, you're going to have to ask Ty Lu that question because, again, that is their defensive I'm asking strategy. You, I, that don't has been the strategy. I don't have Ty Lue in front of me. That has been the you strategy for the Los games. Angeles I'm Clippers. I've, I've, I'm, I'm telling you, that is the, the defensive strategy for the Los Angeles Clippers. He is comfortable switching his bigs onto perimeter players. I played against the Clippers in 21. I was injured, rather, but I was on the Dallas Mavericks for seven games. He switched Zubats onto Luka. He was comfortable living in those matchups. It's not, a, it's not a question for me 
uh, it's not a comparison to Kobe and Jordan. Like, the whole thing with the NBA right now, Shannon, let me, let me explain something to you. The whole thing with the NBA right now is exploitation of matchups. The smartest coaches look to exploit matchups. And that's all the playoffs is. That's what Missoula's doing. That's all doing it about, is. Right? That's, that's what Joe Missoula is so that's great at. That's what the both. best coaches are so great at. They're looking to create advantageous matchups and then exploit that. Put two on the ball, whatever it may be. So your question is, should be for Ty Lue. Why do they switch so much? I don't have the answer. That's his defensive well, strategy. Let me say this, Chicago. First of all, you're right yes. about the Lakers defensively. You're right about the Lakers defensively. They're 21st in defensive efficiency right now. I don't like that at all. I got to look at that. Secondly, I'm not getting caught up in what transpired last night because I've seen Oklahoma City. I've never seen Oklahoma City look this bad this season. Now, I haven't seen every one of their games, so if I missed one, forgive me. But I haven't seen them look as bad. as they, they, They're tired. They didn't. They just looked lethargic last night. And Shea Gill, just Alexander, what was that, his first time in about, what is it, in the last eight games or so, he didn't score at least 30. And we know they go where he takes them. So I take that into consideration as well. But, Shannon, it's nothing wrong, because you do this, Shannon. There's absolutely positively <laughs> nothing wrong with me looking at one team, looking at one team, Shannon, and going like this, yo. They can't beat those guys. Now, I understand that, you know, theoretically speaking, look at them. If you're in the mix outside of Denver, you look at everybody and you say to themselves, they can be had. I can look at Minnesota and look at them as an elite defensive team who are not that great offensively, but against the Lakers because the Lakers are so deficient defensively at times with, with Minnesota being able to exploit them offensively potentially. We know how elite Minnesota's defense could be, so that might neutralize the Los Angeles Lakers. So that's a potential loss. The Clippers obviously is a potential loss. OKC is no joke. You can't summarily dismiss them. If Bradley Beal gets back healthy with KD, with Devin Booker, who knows what that can be. I'm just looking at the Los Angeles Lakers, and I say to myself, damn, when you lose to a team like the Denver Nuggets eight straight times and you show no ability to figure them out whatsoever, that does compromise my level of faith in you, Shannon. That's what I'm saying about the Los Angeles Lakers. Every other point that you're making about the other teams the Lakers could go up against in the West, I get that, but I'm looking at them against the team that swept them, and you're still getting your ass kicked by them all the time. That bothers me. So let me ask you, so if they make it to the Western Conference Finals, you wouldn't deem that as a threat? I'm not now if they go out in the first round, that's one thing. But if they make it all the way to the Western Conference Finals, as they did last year, as the eighth seed, that's still LeBron James, that's still okay. Anthony Davis, and you're right. If they can shoot the ball like they did. Look, I get told now, see, this is what I get. I get told nobody really plays defense on a nightly basis. It's all about exploiting matchups. It's all about putting the ball in the basket. Now, all of a sudden, the Lakers don't play defense. Are they the only team in the Western Conference that doesn't play defense? Well, now, I would tell I you that. Know, I would, I would say this to you. No. I would say this to you, Coach Darvin Ham, who I spoke to Saturday night, he's very concerned about how they've been playing defense, and he can't wait for Jared Vanderbilt to get back. And when J.J. brings up Vanderbilt, and, I, and, and when, he, when, he, when he brings up that bringing back Vanderbilt might compromise them offensively while elevating them defensively, that's one of the things that the Lakers are going to have to figure out. I don't think any of us can escape that. Shannon, Shannon, I, well, I'm, concerned, I'm concerned I'm about his, match, his lineups. Go ahead, J.J., go ahead. No, no, go no ahead. I, I was just going to say, I, I say, as it pertains to the Lakers, like, you, you can do sort of breakdowns on each team, right, what they're good at defensively. Yeah what they're bad at defensively. So you're talking about okay. this is where this is where again and I don't want to I don't want to go over people's head I'm not trying to be like smart here but some of the modern NBA beyond just like hey people don't play defense offenses are so good there there is a math element to this. Mm -hmm. So as it pertains to the Lakers they don't take a lot of threes. So they're behind the eight ball a little bit there. Okay. They give up a lot of threes yes. and teams shoot a high percentage against They do do that. They're bottom yes, three in the do. NBA in giving up threes and bottom eight yes. in the NBA in three-point percentage for their opponents. They also don't defend the rim. They're a bottom five team def defending the rim. Anthony Davis has been excellent defensively this year. No one. Outside of him, they can't defend the rim. Right. So in the playoffs, nope. if you're dragging Anthony Davis out into space, yeah, I have question marks about okay. their defense, and I think that's fair. All right, got to leave it there. Move on to the NFL. JJ, we'll see you a little bit later.